So, I didn't know what I was going to expect waking up today on January the 27th of 2022. I knew that we were going to get some announcement relating to Prima Doll, and I was expecting more web novel chapters, or hell, even a kinetic novel adaptation at best. Um, I certainly wasn't expecting a full-length televised anime that looked this fucking good. And it's scheduled for later this year, too. We won. So, if you haven't read the title, we've gotten a very surprising but very welcome announcement from Key, the same game studio that makes visual novels such as Kanon, Air, Clanad, and Little Busters, which then all get adapted into anime by various animation studios. Occasionally they do make their own anime originals like Angel Beats, Charlotte, and Kamisama Day 2, mixed reception, but regardless of what they make and how they make it, they are known for two things. Moe, and making you cry like a newborn baby. So now that they've made a brand new announcement for this Prima Doll anime, you're probably wondering what it's about and why it's so exciting. Well then, dear viewer, that's what this video is going to be all about. I'm here to tell you all about Prima Doll, from its conception to what it is, before going over the world, characters, and finishing off by looking at the newly revealed anime trailer. This is everything you need to know about Key's newest anime, Prima Doll. So what exactly is Prima Doll? Well, Prima Doll is a mixed media project created by Key. If you don't know what a mixed media project is, well essentially, it's in the title. It's a story that's told through not just one, but various forms of media, with the intention being that you consume the story and characters through all of them, not just sticking to a single one. Examples of this include Frame Arms Girl and Kagero Project. This anime is far from the only part of Prima Doll, and it actually began in 2020 for Key's 20th anniversary. The project was kicked off with the release of a site that detailed the world, setting, and characters, as well as a brand new song called Anthem for Machinery, sung by all of the characters. Aside from that, we've also since gotten a character image song for Hai Sakura called Uzuhana Sakura, that was released along with a scale figure of her produced by Kurobukyo. As we speak, there is also an upcoming figure of Karasuba in the works, who will likely come with her own character song once that's out. As for the actual premise, here's the official one. Prima Doll is a project which revolves around autonomous mechanical dolls, or automata. They work at the Black Cat Cafe, a coffee shop that sits at the corner of the 5th district of the Imperial Capital. They were originally made as weapons for a great war that ended a few years ago. Now. They have been restored and are dressed in shiny new kimonos. Basically, it's a post war slice of life with the cute girls of this story all being robots. So, you already know, as the local robot girl enjoyer, I am already all over this franchise. Purely going off what we have so far in the source material, I'd say if you want an idea of how it's like, it's basically just Gochi Usa meets Violet Evergarden. About half of the story is Moe Blob's slice of life almost uncannily similar to Gochiusa. However, between the fun slice of life and atmospheric Taisho era world, there are occasionally very intimate moments with individual characters, where they show their cracks and the quiet suffering that they're going through, some stories of which hit surprisingly hard. The setting of Prima Doll has its own unique timeline where two major things have happened. One, people have created robots in the form of human beings called dolls. There are two types of dolls, mechanical and automata. Mechanical dolls are the first generation and are essentially pure machines, with automata dolls being the second generation, who are advanced enough to have their own thoughts, personalities, and feelings. The second kind of doll is more or less the one we focus on in the series as... 2. This story takes place after a massive war, one that affected this world very badly. A lot of these automata dolls were created for the sake of participating in the war as soldiers, these prints being referred to as automatons. Now that the war is over though, not only is the nation in economic collapse, but there's also a few remaining automatons walking around with no purpose and nowhere to go. Both aspects are far more in depth than what I just described, but I've tried to simplify it enough so you get the gist. For those interested in the full lore of this world, here is a full timeline detailing every major event from the first doll's creation to the beginning of our story. Pause if you want to give it a read. 
Other than that though, it's a story about these automatons living in a post-war economic collapse as they live their daily lives. Occasionally, we also look into their pasts, where we learn about the things they've gained and lost during the war, how these events affected them, and the emotions they faced as a result of being some of the last few surviving automatons. The story focuses on a cafe called the Black Cat Cafe, run by a handful of these automatons, which lets us segue into the five colorful characters that make up this work. First off is Haizakura, an innocent, hardworking automaton who is often very curious about the things around her. She is quite naive and very clumsy, which often gets her into trouble with other automatons in the cafe. She loves music and enjoys singing. Her dream is that she wants to find out what her role in the world is. Haizakura is essentially the mascot, and is by far the most widely advertised character. She won the hearts of fans when it came to advertising her figure, they basically put her on a pedestal, and she began spinning for us for a whole 88 hours straight, non-stop. Afterwards, she personally tweeted a thanks to everyone who joined before taking a break with an anpan. <sighs> Just look at her. She's so cute. Aww. Second character on the list is Karasuba. She is the leader of the Black Cat Cafe, a dutiful, responsible, and diligent automaton who is the most serious member of the cast. She's a bit of a driven individual, often wanting to showcase the best service and hospitality to her customers, but is very bad at dealing with unexpected situations. She can be a bit strict at times, but she cares deeply for those she works with. Her dream is to make sure that the Black Cat Cafe is able to prosper. Karasuba is my personal favorite character of Prima Doll, and is also my favorite key hero in design. Period. She's beautiful, and I love her. I don't mean, what else do you want me to say? Third automaton is Gekka. She is the quietest member of the cast, a former reconnaissance automaton with a small light build to help with her purpose. She is a blunt, no-nonsense type character, a trait which she carried over from when she worked in the military. She speaks very little, and often doesn't socialize with others. However, when she's given a task, she will always do it to the best of her ability. Her dream is to receive new missions to complete. These three girls were the first automatons introduced to us on the site's launch. After this, fans also received a web novel with lines voiced by the character's proper voice actors. Each chapter was also accompanied with a cute illustration done by Fumuyun. This was the first, and until now, was the only time Prima Doll actually showcased its world in story format. The web novel follows a girl named Usami as our protagonist, a wandering traveler in need of funds and food. Sound familiar? Interestingly enough, Usami is actually Ki's first female lead, which means, for the first time, there are no male main characters in this Key series. Nice. This web novel essentially follows Usami as she runs into Haizakura while she's selling bread. They become friends, and so Usami is brought to the Black Cat Cafe where she meets the other automatons, and eventually begins working at the Black Cat Cafe herself. As the story goes on, we get introduced to even more automatons, who are the remaining two automatons seen in the PV. The fourth one is Hokiboshi, the chef of the Black Cat Cafe. She works at the kitchen, and her cooking skills are absolutely top-notch. She's a very serene, gentle doll, who is often seen as the older sister figure to the other automatons. Her cheerful personality and calming demeanor helps everyone around her feel at ease. She keeps a diary, and is a big fan of writing letters in her free time. Her dream is to sing a song without holding back anything. The fifth and final automaton is Retso. She is a doll created by the former enemy of the nation, so she was asked to be taken in by the Black Cat Cafe for observation purposes, which leads her to feel quite detached from the rest of the cast. She has a dignified and graceful demeanor, but can be quite dangerous when provoked. Similar to Gekka, she retains a lot of her personality from the war, so she can act quite extreme at times. Her dream is to be given a new mission to undertake. These five cute robo-girls are the dolls that gives Prima Doll its heart. They have such a fun dynamic and feel like a cute family that Usami grows closer with over time. At the current point in the web novel, most of the story has been slice of life. However, we've also gotten backstories for Haizakura and Karasuba, focusing on their roles as a bystander affected by the war and someone actively involved in it, respectively. It's not unlikely that down the line, 
Usami will eventually discover the pasts of Gekka, Hokiboshi, and Retsar as well. Hopefully, once that happens, we'll get those premier character bonding moments that we all love from Ki. Now, that's everything we had known about at that point. But of course, now we talk about the new big thing announced, the actual anime. This anime is going to be done by Studio Biburi, who is also known for being the studio who animated the Summer Pockets opening for Ki. Biburi has a very strange track record, in that they don't have much at all. They're only really known for doing Season 2 of Quintuplets and Azur Lane, one which does look pretty good and the other looks rather average. That being said, art style wise at least, I'd actually argue this is the best looking key anime ever. Straight up. The detail is absolutely mesmerizing, with a strong conveyance of its Taisho era atmosphere. Like, as my friend Leeson said, if you didn't know better, you could even assume this was done on a film budget. And I mean, look at the sight image. Even if the anime itself isn't going to be consistently this pretty, holy shit, that's some amazing lighting. We currently don't know much about the anime's content yet. Whether it's going to be an adaptation of the web novel or something else has yet to be stated. However, going off the trailer so far, there's one scene that suggests it might be an adaptation. You see this? This is a surprisingly detailed character in the background that definitely isn't one of the dolls. And you know who this looks like? That's, uh... That's Usami. Now, for all we know, this could of course be a slice of life side story anime that just so happens to include Usami. But I think for the sake of plot and character, it'd be better to just adapt the web novel as an introduction. Maybe make individual scenes longer though, so the story could fit into a full core. Staff-wise, things get a bit interesting. The director is a familiar face, Tensho, or Motoki Tanaka. This man directed the rewrite anime. Now, I know what some people are thinking about once they hear that, and I do see why they can be worried. As much as I consider myself a fan, rewrite wasn't the best anime out there. And from a technical standpoint, range is very hit or miss depending on the scene. But the thing is, Rewrite is a story that had quite a bit of action. Prima Doll does not for the most part. Outside of moments in the war flashbacks, it's a slice of life. And you know what else Tensho is known for adapting? Kirino Moziak. Which, as far as I know, is a pretty well liked and good looking slice of life anime. So I think, for a story like Prima Doll, he's got a good chance of making us proud. Oh, and there's also the fact that he directed the second opening of the rewrite visual novel, but everyone forgets that for some reason. And like, just look at the PV again. I don't know about you, but I think this is a massive step up from the rewrite anime. Second thing that we should note, the screenwriters. They are Okano Toya and Kai, who if you don't know, are very long time writers of Ki that have been with the company since their early days. In fact, to truly home in on how big this is, Kai is the writer of Summer Pockets, the first work to capture Ki's classic charm from their season trilogy days in a whole decade. Some could even argue that at this point, Kai understands the appeal of Ki's stories more than Jun Maeda does. Not to throw shade at Maeda at all here, that's not my intention. My point is, this script is done by classic original writers, so it is most definitely in safe hands. The character designs are done by Akane Yano, who in my opinion, managed to perfectly capture the original character's appeals and unify them into a single art style. A hard task, since each doll's designs are illustrated by different artists. This site also shares some backgrounds from the anime, and this is actually our first illustrated look into the world of Prima Doll. From the Black Cat Cafe to the streets of the outside town and underground, I gotta admit, this is a beautiful world. The steampunk aesthetic blends in so well with the Taisho era aesthetic. Very reminiscent of something like Sakura Wars. For me at least, this is definitely one of the best worlds Ki has made yet and seeing it visually really makes that sink in. 
And with that, I think we just about covered everything. There's definitely going to be more revealed soon as the months tick by. Hell, we don't even have a final date yet to know which season this airs. So for all we know, it could air in a few months to 12. All we know right now is that it's coming this year, 2022. Which honestly, in itself is pretty huge. Either way though, there will be more news to come, and while I don't know if I'll cover it on my channel, I do hope this video clarifies everything we've gotten so far regardless. Prima Doll was definitely the keywork that had the least amount of hype until now. Nobody really talked about it much when it came out, probably because the web novel is untranslated and is very hard to translate. But man, once the anime came out, the floodgates really broke out. Key has just been pumping out so much content non-stop since their 20th anniversary, and with their next full-length visual novel set to be announced in spring, along with a Summer Pockets anime on the horizon, we are really getting fed. It's once again looking to be another fantastic year to be a Key fan. And well, I'm just happy we're getting so much stuff. By the time this video goes up, I'll probably be talking about this anime on the Key Radio Live podcast because, well, there's no way I'm going to be able to contain myself. If you want to join this podcast on Sunday, feel free to enter the Keyverse Discord where we host the podcast via the invite link below. You can also probably join the live chat as we discuss the show and interact with us on stage. Although if you don't have time or miss the date, you can still listen to the completed podcast online or on Spotify, once again down in the description. Either way, that's all from me for now. So hopefully, I'll see all of you somewhere else on the internet. Until then, hope you have a great day.